a lot of transformations in order to make solo debuts. To have the perfect solo debut, they need to be signed to a big music label that will give them exposure and that comes at a price, with their creativity usually shot down. And after all that, Sayu still incurred the risk of making a solo debut and no one will notice it. And thus the recent trend of Sayu with very few years in the industry making solo debuts poses the following question. Should Sayu wait for the right time to make a solo debut or risk it all and rush their debuts? Let's kick off this episode of Sayu Lounge. <laughs> Welcome to Say You Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is Say You Artist Debuts, the new trend of rushing solo debuts. This topic is inspired by a comment on episode 46 by PM. This is actually a topic that, if you haven't noticed so far, I tend to speculate a lot about. And thus, this episode is split into two parts. In this episode, I am covering the new trend of rushing solo debuts. In the next episode, I will talk about the badly timed debuts or whether or not it is worth making a late solo debut. The what-ifs of solo debuts are something fascinating to cover, however, we all need to be aware that these are just that, what-ifs. There may be some chances that were missed by Sayu, some rushed decisions that ultimately didn't go anywhere, not to mention a whole lot of other variables such as fan support, singing skills, music label and music genres performed that also contribute towards a solo debut being successful or not. It is frustrating when those Sayu making solo debuts and failing in those solo endeavors are actually popular as singers in 2D music projects. One would think it would be a surefire thing for their popularity to carry over from the 2D projects that they are a part of to their personal projects, but that, unfortunately, is not how everything works. On the other side of the prism, there are those solo debuts that seem like they were perfectly laid out, made at the right time and with everything in line for them to be successful. As a result, a lot of exposure is brought to the Seiyu talent and most of the times, it leads to them having a successful career. Once again, this is not set in stone. A lot of things go into influencing the success of Seiyu artist experiences throughout their career. Consistency is key. Innovation, while having a trademark sound, is another. Skills as an entertainer or, alternatively, as a singer-songwriter also help keeping them on the spotlight for longer. One thing we can all agree on is that creative freedom is not a thing for rookie Seiyu artists. Yes, in some music labels like Lantis and Sacre Music, Seiyu are asked what are the music genres they want to perform so that their composers can tailor music for them. But most music labels already have their minds made about the CU making a solo debut with a pop or a pop rock single or a mini album. They want the sound to be easy listening and the lyrics easy to understand in a first approach to who may end up being fans of that CU in the long run. After that, things get interesting. Although I'd love to start talking about what goes behind the successful solo debuts, Let's instead put the spotlight on the topic of the new trend of rushing solo debuts. I'll cover the success formula and success stories in a couple of episodes, so please do look forward to those. Now, seeing how making a solo debut is turning into a trend that even say you that you'd consider rookies are jumping into, I reckon way too early for them to actually enjoy a smooth solo career, this is a topic that needs to be covered so that you can understand why rushing solo debuts is a gamble and may not even work in the long run. When is the right time for a CU to make a solo debut? This is a question that you'll be making since you've read the title of this episode or perhaps even before the episode aired. 
It is difficult to say an exact time in the career of a CEO when it is considered acceptable or normal for CEO to make their solo debuts, so I'll tell you what was the trend up until 2019. From 2008 to 2018, Seiyu usually made their solo debuts when they hit the seven-year anniversary as voice actors. Good examples of that are Kensho Ono, Soma Saito, Daisuke Ono and Hiroshi Kamiya. This is an unspoken rule. In nowhere was it written that Seiyu should only make a debut after hitting their seventh anniversary as voice actors, but it started to be a trend and it actually worked fairly well. Solo debuts earlier than that weren't considered normal back then. After all, Seiyu take quite a long time to have a solid repertoire of roles as voice actors, regardless if it is narration, anime dubbing or any kind of voice acting work. And it seemed a bit restrictive because the Seiyu and music industries were holding back talented Seiyu that are insanely skilled as singers until they meet a certain point in their career when, had they done it sooner and everything had worked out well for them, they could be stars by now. Still, it made sense to be that restrictive. Say you build a repertoire or a career over time, solidify it and don't have much more to prove to others after a certain point. Those seven years were enough for the CU to leave the F rank, rise from D to C and quite possibly be in a solid rank B by that time. With luck, and if they are popular, even be a rank A CU. By then, and at those ranks, the CU industry already recognizes the CU for their talents and vast work. If you want to know more about the CU ranking system, I invite you to check episode 8 of CU Lounge. Back to what I was talking about. When CU hit their 7th anniversary, everyone already knew they were talented as voice actors and were, by starting a career as singers, starting a new project, challenging themselves. And they brought with them those fans of theirs that were curious about their singing skills. Notice how this all makes a lot of sense? Aside from the career length restriction, this seems like a natural career progression. Now things aren't as linear and logical, making it really impossible to predict who will make a solo debut next. Since 2019, see you with very few years of career as voice actors and barely enough exposure in anime, games, narration and other media are making their solo debuts. And that's because nowadays it seems like all say you need to have an opportunity as a solo artist is to be in a popular 2D music project and happen to be the leader or the frontman for a group or band on it or in odd cases have the looks that you and I covered on episodes 46 up to 48 of Seiyu Lounge. Good examples of Seiyu that made way too early solo debuts are Gakuto Kajiwara and Jin Ogasawara. Don't get me wrong, they are awesomely talented, but their solo debuts felt insanely rushed. And they still have a lot of growth to experience and a lot of untapped talent before they can be considered impressive singers in my books. Let's analyze a bit their debuts to understand a bit why those debuts were rushed. Gakuto Kajiwara made his solo debut in 2020 with only three years of career as a seiyuu. For all intents and purposes, he was still a junior Seiyu by the time he made his solo debut, which is to say, an F rank Seiyu. Barely earning any money in anime because of the rank pay restrictions and with a small repertoire as a voice actor to back up his talents. Yes, screaming and yelling as Asta in Black Clover is a talent in itself. I know some people are really particular about his acting as Asta, and I can understand it, but see it from this prism. Not many say you would withstand that without having to see a doctor after each recording. But aside from that, Kajiwara was barely anywhere. And it made sense, he was still considered a junior Seiyu. A rising junior Seiyu, but a junior nonetheless. 
although he's got some popularity from his role in Black Clover and rapping in Paradox Live, truth is Kajiwara is not that popular among the common anime or voice actor fan, and that's because he's got very few credits to his name. Making a solo debut with only 3 years in the seiyuu industry is the quickest a seiyuu has ever made a solo debut. Avex, the distributors of Paradox Live, noticed the interest surrounding Kajiwara because of his role as Paradox Live's Suzaku. Something that makes it sound like a crafty way to try to cash in on the project's popularity before it fades away, which is something that is inevitable for 2D projects after a certain period of time. And thus, with only three years in the industry, Kajiwara made a rushed solo debut to capitalize on a sudden popularity boom. Yes, he's a talented singer, there's no question about it. But he and Avex could have waited a bit longer for that to happen. On the other hand, Jin Ogasawara made his solo debut in 2021. I've been enjoying his work as part of Gyroaxia in the past year, but I never expected him to make a solo debut this early and with barely any work to his name to back up his talents. Ogasawara made his debut as a voice actor with a couple of credits in games back in 2016, however, he struggled to put his feet in the anime industry, only making his debut as a voice actor in anime in 2019. And thus, in 5 years, he's got less than 10 roles to his name in anime. While this may not seem like a big deal for you, think with me from a business perspective. You and I are from a music label. Jin Ogasawara is one of the names that appears on our table to have a look at and perhaps think about signing him to our music label. And you see 8 credits in anime, 1 credit in a 2D music project and another one in a mixed media project that does have music in the mix. He's got 5 years of career as a seiyuu, but never seemed to stand out up until now. Will you sign him to your music label knowing that you are trying to make money with his solo career and that, at the same time, is barely known to fans of anime and to the music? I don't know about you, but I would put that debut on hold until he got more experience and popularity. From a business standpoint, that debut is incredibly rushed, not because it was early on in his career, but because he doesn't have enough work or varied work to back up his singing skills nor his voice acting skills. Yes, as a music label A&R, I could take a chance and gamble by signing him because he surely has the talent and potential to be a star, but that would be only that, a gamble. Unless something extraordinary and unexpected happens that makes his popularity boom, there's no real gain for a music label by signing him and giving him a solo debut this early on in his career. I know that by now some of you may be thinking that I am picking on him, but it's not really that. There are multiple examples of solo debuts made in the wrong timing that have ultimately led to fluked solo debuts and solo careers that are no more for some seiyuu. And of course, for seiyuu and singer as roughly talented as Jin Ogasawara, it would be frustrating to find him meeting such an end. In comparison with Kajiwara, that also made a rushed solo debut, Ogasawara's solo debut came as an even bigger surprise, and at the same time, something that makes me wonder why didn't he wait longer for that debut to happen, especially given how he's barely known in the CU industry aside from his work in Gyroaxia and in the WAVE franchise. As you can tell with this brief coverage of both solo debuts, there's an issue that only comes with this trend of Seiyuu making solo debuts really early in their career as voice actors. Seiyuu that make early or even rushed solo debuts do not have a repertoire as a voice actor to back up their alleged talents. Yes, they can show those through singing in 2D music projects and through the voice acting opportunities that come after that success. However, by making an earlier debut, those say you are putting themselves in a harder path to success. If it is already pretty difficult for popular say you to make a transition to singers and actually sell well, 
Now imagine those Seiyu that are barely known and still decide to make a solo debut. Seiyu rushing their solo debuts are basically making a solo debut in Nightmare Difficulty Mode. Although rushed debuts, I welcome you to check Gakuto Kajiwara's A Walk and Gion Gasawara's Only One Thing. Two awesome singles that deserve your attention to this new generation of CU artists currently joining the music industry. After all this talk, what are the risks of making a solo debut way too early? Lack of exposure and debuts tanking before they even started are the most common things to happen if a CU makes a solo debut way too early in their career or, alternatively, make a solo debut when they are not popular or don't have enough work to their name. Additionally, at their earlier stages in their career, big music labels won't be interested in signing those CU as solo artists, which leaves them with only indie or small music labels showing an interest in supporting their want to make a solo debut. Follow me on this one. If a CU is not that popular, and is yet to have their big breakthrough as a voice actor, and decides to sign with an indie music label for a solo debut, what do you think will happen? For starters, only hardcore fans of that CU will know about and follow that solo debut. And that's because there won't be much publicity on magazines about it. Remember, indie and small music labels don't have much money to help their artists. Then, if that CU doesn't get much popular over time, it will be a recipe for disaster in their solo career, especially if they stick with that indie or small music label. That can lead to their solo debut and eventually career to tank. Selling below 1000 copies of a CD is a common occurrence for CU that are not popular and made the debut under an indie or small music label. Although from time to time you hear about CU artists selling 15,000 or 20,000 copies of their CDs, few are the CU that achieve those sales numbers. Those are the CU that you can genuinely say are popular. In some cases, selling below 1,000 copies for rookie CU artists leads to long hiatus for them or can even lead to a silent end to their solo career before it even properly started. Early solo debuts not always come with good music labels offering contracts. A good thing that I talked about with quite a lot of detail throughout episodes 34 to 39 is that depending on the music label, CU may earn more or less money for their activities as singers. Big music labels like Sony Music Japan, King Records, Avex and Universal Music Japan are the most coveted for CU artists. Then you have the big music labels that are more welcoming to Seiyu trying to be solo artists. Sacra Music, King Amusement Creative, Lantis and Pony Canyon. Some of these are sub-labels of those bigger music labels I just mentioned. On paper, all of these music labels will turn their Seiyu artists into stars. They have the resources and the connections to do so. As long as Seiyu are talented as singers or even singer-songwriters, or alternatively as performers even if they lack a bit in the singing skills department, those music labels can make them stars. In the past decade, it has been a trend for these music labels to only offer and sign contracts with genuinely popular Seiyu. I am not talking about Seiyu popular for voicing one character in anime or being in one popular 2D music project. I'm talking about experience. Proven experience. They look for Seiyu with a proven record as both voice actors and singers. Those are also the Seiyu that have large fan bases or followings, in case the Seiyu in question don't have fan bases registered. As big and successful music labels, they want instant return on investment in the CU they sign contracts with to be solo artists. That's why they go for those with experience and popularity. There's an exception though, Avex with Gakuto Kajiwara. Aside from that, big music labels do not sign with CU without a proven record as voice actors and or cumulatively vast experience as singers in 2D music projects. That's just how the music industry works. 
but you'll say, there are always other music labels out there for say you. And you are not wrong. Yet, those are murky waters that say you should trail carefully. While there are some indie and small music labels that are awesome, Artsonic being the best example of that, for the most part, independent and small music labels not only have bad budgets, but they also don't have marketing strength nor big contacts in the music industry to support their artists and make them noticed. And of course, debuts when CU are not popular or don't have enough work to their name, and thus they are not only not popular, but also not known, may lead to fluked debuts. Once again, there are always exceptions to everything I said. However, note that those are rare cases and, for the most part, making an early or rushed solo debut is basically putting a CU in insanity mode for their solo career. It won't be smooth sailing. They may take years before experiencing success. They may have to deal with releases selling below 1000 copies time and time again until something clicks between their music and their fans. That's why this whole trend of rushing solo debuts that is going on since 2019 is not necessarily a good thing. In this episode I covered the recent trend of rushing solo debuts and why it can be a massive gamble that won't pay off in the end. At the same time, I gave you a couple of reasons why that gamble may not work, even if there are exceptions in the CU industry that tell us otherwise. Please note that this episode is meant to be informative, covering a trend that I believe will eventually damage both the CU and music industries. In no way I am against solo debuts, I only believe that talent, regardless of age, should be rewarded, but never underestimating the variables that come into play for that reward to actually lead to success. And why do I worry about rushed solo debuts? You see the solo debut of Gakuto Kajiwara and notice it was extremely well received. You look at Jin Ogasawara's solo debut and you notice it wasn't. But if the trend of having success with the rushed solo debut picks up, then you'll start to see a change in the CU industry. I reckon one that could destroy voice acting as an art. And that's because people aiming to be singers and failing to do so for various reasons will notice that it is easy to join the music industry by just being a CU and having good looks or the luck of being cast in a 2D music project. The CU industry may end up being used as a stepping stone to other fields in the entertainment industry, something that will take the focus away from the quality of voice acting and put it solely on singing skills or looks. And yes, there are exceptions of CU blessed with both singing skills, looks and awesome voice acting skills, but once again, those are exceptions. If rushing solo debuts turns into a trend and the success stories are more than the unsuccessful ones, it will lead to a large number of Seiyu making their debuts and instantly joining the music industry or making their whole or most of their career about working in 2D music projects. Once again, I believe that Seiyu should be rewarded for their talents regardless of age or career length, but you'll have to agree with me that few are the CU that sound perfectly ready for that from the get-go. Some only have their singing skills at a good, comfortable level a couple of years after their debuts as CU, others even take decades to hone their skills and sound good. So yeah, this trend of rushing solo debuts may not arrive as good news, at least for me. But enough about my opinion. Tell me. What do you think about this recent trend of CU rushing their solo debuts in the music industry? Do you think they should wait a bit to debut or do you believe this is actually a good thing for CU aiming to be artists? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, leave your comments as complex or as simple as they may be and you can be featured on upcoming episodes of CU Lounge. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the Hand That Feeds HQ's weekly mail CU and music-related content, hit the subscribe button. 
I'll return next week with another episode of Say You Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around.